Welcome to another fully unedited meeting for us building Wandering fully Aimfully. unedited. I don't know why this <laughs> No clue. No clue uh, why I did this. A lot. The whole point of these videos is to really show you that you can be a fly on the wall for these discussions that we have on how we go through big topics for this business that we're building. Specifically in this one, it's what is the product? What is the thing? What are our customers getting? Um, and these meetings aren't always perfect. Yeah, as you'll see in the beginning of this video, the meeting kind of starts off kind of tense. This is the type of thing that's gonna happen if you're collaborating with someone, especially someone that you know very well, especially someone that you might be married to. Um, and this is the kind of stuff that we wanna show you guys because it's not always the perfectly smooth meeting. It's not always you know exactly kind of what, where the meeting is gonna go or what you wanna end up with. And this is the type of communication that has to happen. You have to approach it with a good sense of humor and you have to stay in the room and get through it so that you can move forward on your project and that's what you'll see in this video hope you enjoy it hope it helps you in some way uh, or it's just something fun to listen to for over an hour do you want and to lead this meeting or do you want me to lead this meeting i think we're gonna lead it together hey you know how most people talk about doing business where while well, wearing sweats yeah i'm straight up wearing sweats are you sweating no do you feel comfy? Straight up comfy. Do you think I'm jealous? All right, babe. What are we getting into? Because I am. Set the tone. Okay. So the purpose of this meeting is a couple of things. Yeah. Chef today I've prepared for Chef you. Chef today I've prepared for you. Yeah. A product development slash customer experience meeting. Yeah. I want to talk about like what Wandering Aimfully the product is. The Essentially the business model. Yeah. And what a customer gets. Where are you going? I was just laughing because you and I seem to have a semantics issue yeah. with this. Yeah. So we just need to hash that out. Because what Wandering Aimfully is, maybe we should say what the Wandering Aimfully membership is? Would that? Yeah. And so in like my mind, in business terms, that's the product, right? Mm -hmm. That is what we are selling, mm -hmm. the membership. Mm -hmm. So that's why I keep calling it product development because like yeah. I know it's not a physical product, mm -hmm. but it's a monthly digital product. So in my mind, it's like what are the features of that product? What does a person get? What are the bullet points on a sales page of like this includes? Type this is thing. juicy already. This is so juicy. There's drama. I know. Oh man, I just smudged my glasses. Can you add drama? It's the worst. Can you add drama music to this when you edit it? Ba ba ba. I think I'm actually editing this one, though, so I'll add some like good. T -t oh, smudged. I just stuttered like my brain <laughs> short circuited. What happened? Um. So that's why I keep referring to it as um, product development. This is. But in your mind, business model. Yeah, I mean, this is this is not the user facing meeting. This is the customer people who are buying stuff from us and what they're getting from us meeting. Correct. Yeah. But you keep calling it business model, and in my mind, the business model is a monthly subscription. Yeah, but then I just like then I go one step further of like, okay, what does someone get? What is the, you know what do they from all of that? So like product development type right. stuff. Right. Sure. Yeah, you can use your words. I'll use mine. I just and eventually, really, I really feel like we need to come to some sort of agreement. Agreement on why you keep using the word business model. I think it's great that people get to actually see how we argue in a meeting, so that they can be as uncomfortable and sweaty as sometimes. Are you we getting are. sweaty in your sweat? Oh no, I'm not. No, no, I'm but just... in all seriousness, so like, can we just agree that when you say like what it includes and the features and stuff like that, that's the product? Sure. Can you uh, agree that the product? has to do with the business model. It certainly has to do with it, but like we've agreed on what the business model is. Uh-huh. Like define business model. The business model is how like the exchange of value for money. But my point how is does the what is the value? Get, I understand. The business model is like how does money come into the business? How now brown cow? <laughs> Had to break it up. All right, let's move on. We are on the same page. I don't feel like we resolved that. What? I don't want you to just move on just because people are going to see this. Like, this is really the discussion no, that's how, that we have. Yeah, I know. But that's how it happens in real life, too. Yeah, I know it does. You know, we go, okay, let's move on. <laughs> You're like, I don't think we should move on. They're like, we should move on. And then we sit here for, like, probably 10 seconds. Ah, let's, then we move on. We do a great job. What is this meeting? This meeting is on the business model, which is also the product development. <laughs> <laughs> great. I'm going to write business, business model, model and product, product development. development. Business, business model, model is a monthly subscription. Great. Let's move on to the product development portion sure. of this meeting. <laughs> this is really great. No one's going to want to watch this. 
If anyone's watched this far, kudos. I'm physically sweating. Like you, I'm so you actually are, sweating. So you are the yeah. sweaty one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter what we call it. The point of this meeting is to figure out what's included in a membership, what the experience is that a customer has, and then specifically to shift that into that experience into potentially what the dashboard is going to be like mm -hmm. because the next step in the design process is I'm going to wireframe the dashboard tomorrow. So it's kind of like a three in one type deal. Oh, like a, like Business a bonus bogo. model, product development, dashboard design kind of thing. A bow throw. A bow throw. Buy one, get three free. A bow throw. Okay. Hashtag. A we made throw. it out. How old do you think that LaCroix is? Just out of curiosity. If I had to guess, it was when I was down here on Saturday. Two days. Mm. That ain't bad. Now chopsticks? <laughs> <laughs> now those chopsticks are from, when did we go to the grocery store? We didn't get chopsticks at the grocery store, did we? We got them from Bird's Eye. Oh, Bird's Eye no, 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 takeout no. place. Listen, we got them from, we got them, but we put them in the drawer. So yeah. I took them out when we got sushi at the grocery store. Yeah. Veggie sushi. Cool. All right. Let's just, just take is it there anything? Is there anything else that you want to <laughs> maybe question? That's off screen? Yeah. No. No, no, no. I feel pretty good about everything else. Yeah, you're doing great. How old are these sweats? Well, that's the... So this is an interesting topic discussion. <laughs> when am I supposed to replace them? We don't have time for this. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Business. Business. Okay. 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 Do you want me to read what we have from our planning session from before? Sure. Just to get us... Refreshed. Refreshed. Um, this is the planning session we did in October of last year. This is in no, in Tulum. Oh, okay. So we did an ori original plan in October. Mm -hmm. Then we went on vacation in Tulum beginning of December. So this is yeah, this five, is four or five months old mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see how they hold up. Um, so under the section titled business model... <laughs> we have a couple of things. More than just the price? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but personally, 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 I would like to know. <laughs> personally. <laughs> also, who wrote this doc? Who wrote this doc? Both of us. Personally, I feel like you were mistaken back then as well. <laughs> and I just picked my battles and I didn't, didn't question it. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know you can see when people make changes like you can track those <laughs> you can track those changes this is model slash product. Mm, i see that what the problem is it's titled biz model which feels different <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, this is rain it in i can't i can't Actual even sweat. i can't even with sweat. this meeting um this is the one we're gonna put on the home page <laughs> Okay. With a big button underneath that says, want to buy? <laughs> <laughs> buy some stuff from us? Yeah. Um, okay. Monthly subscription. You think Marie Forleo does calls like this? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah. Monthly subscription yeah. to all of our online courses, software products, workshops, guides, and community members. So the existing buy our future, future stuff. Yeah. It's like a monthly whatever. Things we wrote down. Does it have a unique name? Library as a defining word? Monthly, quarterly, in the mailbox? Question mark. We did write down the price, which we'll talk about. Um, access to all new stuff going forward at no extra cost. That was like a point that we were a little bit confused about because you kept wanting to use that as a selling point. And my whole thing is like, you can't really say that because they're going to pay for it as it happens. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Um, but I do think people are conditioned to be like, Yes, I'm paying for this thing, but does that mean I'm going to get the extra stuff that comes along? You know? Like when people are paying for like a membership, a lot of times they don't know that that membership includes like every single thing that you make or that someone makes. Because I just think so rarely do people do that. Do you understand my potential concern here? My Give me like, an exa like a hardcore example with like actual we make a We make a course on selling and like how to be a non sleazy salesperson and you know, whatever. So the people understand who are paying members of one. If they continue to pay, they'll get that as well. Right. Yeah. So I think it, right. I I'm totally understand what you're saying. And I think that that's in like a language thing of like, with this membership, you get any new trainings that we 
create. Any new nutrients. New nutrients. Yeah. Uh, but I, I get what you're saying, and we'll, we should definitely, like, address that in the language for sure. Um, Sorry if my foot looks huge. It's close to the camera, but deal with it. We said... I was, like, really trying to come up with, like, a witty big feet joke there. And yeah. it, like, didn't happen for me. But it's because I'm focused. Monthly quarterly new training slash workshop. The, we wrote down big focus having predictable income. Which, like, throughout our whole brand exploration, the whole thing that I've been sort of to toying with in my head is this idea of helping you earn a sustainable living. But then we go one step further and show you how to actually live it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like so many people use this phrase of like earn a living with your creative talents, earn a living, earn a living. And it's like, or, or like a sustainable income, but it's like, what is that for? And it's to live. And so I just don't want to lose sight of that. So if there's some way that we can incorporate that and we've talked about that, it's important to us that we include training. That's not just business, but life. So like how to schedule yourself, how to manage your money, how to deal with your health, like all that stuff. Um, we also just wrote never discounted, um, never included in other bundles or promos, and never raise the price on existing members. Do you think it's worth, since we are recording this for other people, to explain why we're making those decisions? Just quickly? Well, Doesn't this have to was, be long. I mean, do you still stand by all of these? Yeah, I firmly want to stay on the no discounts and not included in other people's bundles um, for a couple reasons. One... I think discounts are okay on like specific products and like a, an online course or whatever. And, and there's some, you know, because the pricing is completely arbitrary for that type of thing. Um, for something like w what this is becoming, which is kind of like its own little SaaS product, its own little software product, I just feel like the value is too immense to think about discounting. And I think when you start to create a precedent of discounting, then people will always wait for discounting. Mm -hmm. And I think for something like jeans, when you go to the store, it's an understood mm -hmm. thing that like there's a huge markup on that and that you're waiting for the company to be okay with making less money. For us, the reason we're picking the price that we're picking, which we can go over in a little bit of detail, yeah. is because that price sustains our life. And if we pull money off of that, we now have an unsustainable life because we've pulled money away from the price that we decided we right. wanted to charge. No, I totally get that. And I just, I know you do. I just more oh. wanted to explain. Yeah. But I'm you glad just, you're on you board. Really, you really sold glad you're on me. board. I yeah. was like, no, I'm, I'm on the same page with you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think we should. That's a good point to remember to explain some of these decisions. But, um. And I think it's also an interesting thing to potentially write on the sales page as well for people to understand and even use that specific metaphor of being like, you wait for a pair of jeans to go on sale because the company that makes them has a huge markup. You don't wait for Wandering Influence membership to go on sale because there is no huge markup. Like we're making as much money on every person based on the breakdown of how that money is being allocated behind the scenes. I mean, maybe. Yeah, it's just something to think yeah, about. Yeah, it's just yeah. something to think about. Yeah. Like I, it just, in my brain, it's like people are going to understand as time goes on that we don't discount it, whether we explain that to them or not. Sure. Um, but, okay, so for this specific meeting, things that I wrote down were... I think we should really hammer down on what you get every month and what you want, what we want the experience to feel like. Like yep. those are the two big question marks. Yep. So would you rather start with what's included or would you rather start with what you want the experience to feel like? I think we should start with what's included because we've been talking about this quite a bit and there's a lot of ideas floating around. So I think we should try and hone this in and come to an agreement in okay. a reasonable amount of time. Okay. What was that noise? I don't know. Random noise. The pan, probably. The pan. <laughs> <laughs> cool. The Peter pan. Um, bad joke. Sorry. So. Why is it a bad joke? It just wasn't good. Oh. Yeah. Like not like there's no like hashtag <laughs> Peter Pan petered me or something going on. Not that there's anything wrong with if you. I don't know. <laughs> Anywho. Um, Okay, so kind of what we've been talking about is the way Buy Our Future works right now, as of recording this, because it's not done yet, but it will be, is that it drops you into a dashboard full of your stuff. So you've purchased all these things, you, you can see them all, they're nice, beautiful tiles, and you can click in and get access to any of those things. But it's overwhelming, you know, it's like going to a grocery store and walking in and being like, I don't have a list. I don't know what I want. Like everything is everywhere. You know, 
as opposed to what if we took the the mindset of this to like we could show people that if they wanted to see it but more importantly there's just a big message and and i'm kind of thinking about the dashboard for a buyer of this compartmentalized in a couple different ways and we can go over the compartments that are in my mind is it possible for you to put a pin in this thought because this feels more dashboard related and we haven't even covered like what's included no because i think this this uh speaks to what's included okay so I think, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of like... No, it's fine. It's just like, I want to be clear about communicating what I need out of this, which is to have the bullet list of like, you get these courses, you get yeah, this I mean, training, you get I this... I think it's easy to say that all the things are in Buyer Future are already included. Do you do you feel the need to write That's this? fine, but we need to... No, I don't feel that need to write them down itemized, but... We'll, you and I need to go, okay, if, if all of our courses are included, let's let's deep dive into that. Does it mean that we're selling our other courses the way that they are now? Because my site's not going to exist anymore. Do I shut down the hand lettering for beginner site? Like, I think we need to, like, really follow that idea to its conclusion before we talk about how it's displayed in the dashboard. I just kind of want to start with, like, not putting the cart before the horse. You know what I mean? Well, you gave me options. I took my option, and it was... Reeled back in. So we're going your way. I was like, is the cart before the horse or is it gone fishing? Gone fishing. All right, so let's go your way. So you want to go through every product one by one and decide what to do with them? Is that what? I feel like we're not on the same page. Okay. Which is fine. We just need to get on the same page. Yeah. And I feel like you're upset because I. No, no, no. Not upset at all. Your... Not okay. upset at all. Not upset at all. I, th that thought has been swirling around in my mind, so I have no problem bringing it back up whenever needed. Okay. I'm just... People are really getting the real zhuzh well, this today. Is, this nice. is what it is. But... Hey, man, I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. No, don't, don't do that. Just... Just my forearm. Okay. Um, I feel like I've said it a few times now, and I just feel like maybe I'm not being clear. Like, I just... If, if we were going to say to somebody, hey, join the Wandering Amphilene membership, you get, what would we say? So it's the same thing we say for buyer future now. Okay, let's just. So you want to list out all the things? I, I just want to get. I don't want to list all of our courses one by one. I want to say like you get. I don't know the number. So seventeen online courses, six guides. It doesn't. We don't need to do numbers. I'm just saying like let's list it all out. Like courses, our guides, our. Um, so do you get teachery? Yep. And you get software. Um, bump sale, and you get. What else? The, the software, it makes sense to list out because it's like very few things. Teachery, of course, books, Spruce Metrics, Bump Sale, Your Pack. So basically, it's like one monthly membership to rule them all. Mm -hmm. So each of those individually, like again, this is just like working through the product. Each, If you were going to do a monthly membership to all five of those things, how much would you pay? Around? 49 for tea tree, 18 for of course books, 18 for your pack. This is where you have to do math. I'm giving you the numbers. Oh, God. 50, Calculator. 20, Calculator. 70. Okay. You're just, you're mad at me. So you wanted me to do math on camera and it's not a nice thing to make a person do. I'm actually going to make sure our camera is still being the camera. Everyone gets to see my sweet sweats. Sweats. I don't really know how my. I don't really know what we've accomplished so far if people are this far in for them. Okay. 49. 49. 18. 18. 18. 18. 19. 19. Your pack? Or bump sales just fees? Bump sales free. Okay. So, so that's a hundred bucks right there. Yeah. Just in software. Now, maybe someone wouldn't use all of those things, but, um, right. so you get software, you get the guides, you get our existing courses. That's everything. Now, <clears throat> what else? Courses, guides. Um, Community, we've said, so that's a big part of it. Yeah, quarterly calls. Um, -ba well, and then this is where it's like starting to have the discussion of are we creating any new things for Wandering Aimfully? And this is where I was talking yesterday when we were on the way to the farmer's market um, about creating like little roadmaps for people based on kind of best practices that we've learned. Yeah. I think it's important to look at this as it is right now and go, because it's basically at that point is just a monthly subscription of buyer future. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, but I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone that's going like, 
okay, maybe I want to do a podcast. And so it makes sense to me to join Wandering Aimfully because I know I'm going to get um, how to get sponsorships for podcasts and podcasts like a boss. But then when I start my podcast, what keeps me around? Is it worth it to continue to pay month after month? And I think the answer to that is new training, new content. Um, but specifically around their, what they signed up for? No, it's more talking about this that we've talked about before, which is like doing a theme for the month and doing, mm-hmm. you know, and, and do we do a business theme and a life theme, which I think not to get too like themey and it doesn't even have to be front facing, but like this idea of, yes, we're going to give you topics for improving your business and making you more money, but also we want to give you training for living a life well, you know? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, that's what we've talked about. I know, but we're not, this is the time to talk about it. Yeah. So yes. What's the frequency of that? I don't know. And what does that look like? That's what this meeting is about. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just, it's, I think this now goes into, like, if we just say, like, frequent workshops, if we just write that down, like, frequent themed workshops, and the outcome of that, we don't know exactly what that is. And then I think it's instead of going further down that road is to take a step back and go, what work do we want to be doing on a monthly basis? Yeah. But why don't, I mean, for sure. And that's going to be a huge part of it. What if we use this opportunity to say like, shoot for the moon, like everything that you would want to be included, let's write it down or even like ideas, like the tools we've talked about or like, you know, whatever. And then we can scale it back. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Because realistically, all these things don't require any more work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I'm afraid of, is creating like a never-ending workload for us. I know that we're going to have to be creating some new things, because it's a monthly membership, not a buyer future thing where people stop paying, so they're never going to pay anymore. Um, And you need to provide value on an ongoing basis. But part of the difference a little bit here is that the way that this works now is that it's like you're paying for access. So if you no longer want access to these things, you stop paying and you no longer have access. So like you don't have a teacher account, you don't have any, like it's all, it's all gone. So that's kind of a, like a little bit of a different way that this being framed. I'm just bringing that up not to say that that changes this conversation more just like that's the mental shift for us here. That being said, to answer your question, um, I mean, I think doing something themed every quarter seems the most doable, knowing how much video content we want to create, knowing that we want to live our lives, knowing that we want to take care of our customers and be able to answer their questions and and hop on Skype calls and answer emails and chat and all that stuff. I think we need to make time available for those things. And so if we're going to do themed training workshop process breakdown things, um, we should be realistic about what that's going to look like and maybe start with the assumption that, you know, uh, every quarter we're going to have uh, a live call where we talk about stuff, but then like also every quarter, but not on the same schedule, if that makes sense. So it's like February is a new training or maybe looking at this, like May is a new training. And then our next quarterly call is actually going to be June or July. So they kind of like every two months rotate. So it's like a training and then a live call and a training and a live call. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll write that down. So I'm going to write, <clears throat> instead of where I have the quarterly calls, I'm going to put like quarterly themes with live training and then quarterly calls alternating. I guess. Like maybe it's just easier to write like every two months and then underneath that the bullet point is either a live call or a themed workshop slash training. Yeah. 
So, like... The reason I'm being quiet is just because, like, I totally hear you on not wanting to, like, set ourselves up for, for failure. That's super important to, like, really be honest about the workload and also making sure that we're not so busy creating new content as some t- sort of marketing vehicle that we're creating, not giving ourselves enough time to create a really custom and good experience for... Well, yeah. And so the other thing that, you know, let's take one specific example. So I really want to do some type of workshop on how we manage our money, because I think we've really honed in a good system now. Airtable has provided us with a piece of software that's incredibly great. And I think everyone would be better off if they manage their money on a weekly basis and really saw where every dollar went and had a system that did that. Dropping them into Airtable is going to be a nightmare. It's just too difficult. Having them watch a workshop even walking them through is super overwhelming. Now, what can we do in between those things or even before that? And that to me is like a little tool. That's like a little financial tool where you can input like a couple of the basics from our worksheet and we can pull off some of those things so that people can see, oh, hey, this is the like creative entrepreneur, like money management system. This is not the like, I work a nine to five job, I get a paycheck every two weeks or month or whatever that my taxes are already taken out. Like this is the, oh, I work for myself and I need to understand I should squirrel away money for taxes. And what does that mean? Like how much? And, and like, I don't want to get into all the state specific codes and federal stuff and all that, but like <clears throat> just cover the bases for people and give them some type of tool. So in my mind, if we're doing a live call or a live workshop every two months, also in that time, we would be kind of creating these tools. And maybe the goal is, it's one or two tools per year because we want them to be really helpful. But they're also something where I really see them as like, it's behind the doors of Wandering Aimfully. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could see the tool and you could like, maybe there's a preview version to kind of lead people in. But, you know, part of what we talked about too is that we're hopefully not going to be selling this on an ongoing basis. So we're not going to have to do a lot of outbound marketing. So it's really just like continuing to reward our customers Mm -hmm. with new stuff and, and stuff that's helpful to them. And that's kind of the way that I've been thinking about some additional things. Yeah, I think that's good. I think, and maybe this is like a limiting belief on my part, but I think the thing that keeps like holding me back is like, I don't want to feel like we're just repackaging by our future. No, and I don't want to feel that way either, which is why like I started going down the road in the beginning of like, okay, what does this look like when someone logs in and what do they see? And like, what are we asking them? Because I really believe like, what I think is the most helpful for people is to spe- like take your podcast example of someone who wants to start a podcast, wants whatever. Um, so maybe what we do is we create like a, a podcast like scheduling tool or spreadsheet or something within Wandering Aimfully that they have access to that helps them keep their podcast organized. Like who's the guest? Have you done the outre- outreach? What did they say? Who's your next guest? Have you uploaded the files? Have you edited the files? Like it's these little checklist things that someone would have to create for themselves, but most people don't because they don't think that way. They're just the creative person. And that's where we really bring something special to the table where we can do the creative thing and we can do the, you know, whatever the end result is, but also there's the planning and strategy and processes in place that keep that thing humming along nicely. Mm -hmm. And so if we take a look at the majority of what people are looking for within all of our products, where I think there's value is to actually take our products, improve upon them a little bit. And like your better branding course, mm-hmm. I'm sure you could immediately think like, here's the, like the checklist I should create for people or like, you know, the, um, branding guide and how mm-hmm. they should build it, you know, like whatever or it we've is. we talked about like the mood board tool. Remember we talked right. about that for a long time ago to help people with visual vocabulary, like who aren't maybe as design centric of like, okay, what does like one of our tone words, funky. What right. does that look like visually? Right. It, it, and it pulls in these images that you can choose from. I really like the idea of like when you get access to Wandering Aimfully. So we help you with courses, like live training and tools and the community. And those are sort of the four pillars, right? Yeah. Uh, I think you're just saying that for how we organize it in our thoughts. Versus what? Well, because I think about... What's your hesitation? No, no. I just think about it from like a customer perspective. And a customer doesn't really care, I don't think, necessarily about all that stuff. They more care like, oh, these people are going to help me get my podcast going, get it to generate revenue, and then keep it going on an ongoing basis. 
Yes, I'm talking about that. And what you're talking about is a benefit and I'm talking about features. Right. So it's fine. I think we need both. But I do think that we need for our own minds and for our customers' minds to have these very definitive things where someone goes, okay, what is this? Right. What do I get? You right. know? So in my mind, I just want to make that clear, which is courses, live trainings, tools, community. Yeah. And I think it's important to just even note that, like, to me, this is how a lot of these conversations go when we're thinking about this stuff is you can be speaking a different language, you can be thinking different things, or you can be doing whatever, but you write them all down or you keep them, and then you kind of come back together and figure out where do they all fit in and how does it all work together. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I just lost my train of thought about is, I just had it, courses, bring it back, tools, community, um, oh, also do we want as like another, like what's included, you know, is it hidden content for people that are just membership? So like, is it some of these like behind the scenes, you know, more transparent things that like we're doing publicly facing for building the site, but maybe we s s reserve that for like sure. paying members. I don't know. I mean, have no, I hate using the lower term VIP content, no, but yeah. you know what I mean? I, I have no clue if people are actually going to give a shit about these videos, but if they do and it's something that they enjoy, then I think getting the behind the scenes recordings of these meetings, cause we do them often is an easy value add and an easy thing that. You... Well, to me, we validated it a little bit with, even before we decided to do this for the building of Wandering Aimfully, when we did the full length. Let's try this. <laughs> it's just like Roy. Oh, it's lemon. <laughs> it's not bad. lemon. Or melon, sorry. Oh, that's why you're trying it. I'm like, what? They have melon and lemon. When do we? They're anagrams. When do we try this? Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, took a turn. Um, so what were you saying before I interrupted you with LaCroix? Um, what I was saying is we validated this a little bit when we did the first brainstorm meeting for Wandering Aim Fleet, remember, at the co-working place, and we gave it to the Buyer Future Slack group, and people loved it. Yeah. Just as, like, something to put on in the background, and you go, like, oh, this is how somebody does this, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Checking the recording. People might be wondering, why does it keep checking the recording? It's because this is being recorded on an iPhone. Yeah, I just, through all of this, like, even as we do all of this, con or all of this features of it and stuff, I want to remind ourselves, like, what the whole purpose is, which is just to help people boost their income of whatever their creative business is, or make side income or whatever, so that they can live also also a better life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I just, the, I don't want to lose sight of that. No. And honestly, the income for me is, is secondary to just f feeling less overwhelmed totally. about wanting to do some type of creative and creative endeavor. And we know that this, that the income is secondary, but we have to sell it as though it's primary because yeah. that's what people are in the mindset of, of like, I, I can't live my life as fully as I want because I'm stressed about money. We guarantee six figs in the first six months. But like the fruit, I mean the fruit. Six things. Yeah. Okay, so the recorded training, so the other outlier here is the quarterly boxes. Mm -hmm. Or biannually boxes mm -hmm. or annual box. And one of the ideas that I had brought up is maybe you get a box at a certain membership level. So like... Make it six months. Yeah, if you're in it for three months, you get your first box. You're in it for six months, you get your second box. So that... If you bring two friends, <laughs> you get the two friends The box. only reason I'm suggesting that is because we've run the numbers and it's quite a bit of a cost to us. And yes, it creates like a very memorable experience and I want that. I also want to be able to cover that cost knowing that that person... Like if we gave a box to every person that signed up, well, yeah, they could stay sure. on for a month and yeah. we have to eat that. You know, so it's like... At what point, so like, let's say the boxes cost $10 each, per. then you start to realize, okay, after three months, that person has brought in $300 of revenue plus our costs per, per customer. So then, you know, we can justify the spend or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about the box for the people at home? 
You talk about the box. So the idea is to send something tangible in the mail. So when we say a box, we mean a physical box. Um, I thought there was one down here. I don't know where it went. A uh, box. But the, um, well, no, like an actual buyer future box. I'm just kidding. So what we've done the past couple of years, there's something upstairs. A dog. Um, yeah, some kind of animal. What we've done the past couple of years of Buy Our Future his face mushed in this pillow right now. is every time people buy, we then collect information about them and we send them a box in the mail. This is not, you know, I mean, this isn't new, but it's a very curated box. Like there's a specific thing to you in it because you filled out the survey and we found a couple like little trinkets and things that are fun and it becomes a nice, memorable, welcoming experience. Mm -hmm. And so while I do agree that I would like to get people to a certain month mark, I really also love that like your first impression with this is that you got something in the mail. Now, that being said, we could potentially scale it back. Like Completely. we could do like an envelope for yeah. the first month, which only costs us like three dollars plus Much our less. time. Yeah. And you know, that's something we do. And listen, the other part of this is that we're trying to keep this membership at around three hundred members total. That in the beginning we're not gonna have three hundred total members to begin with, we're gonna have like fifty. So it's super manageable to put together 50 of these things. as that's kind of the chunks that we've done them in in Buyer Future. Now, for the people at home, what in your brain <clears throat> tells you, like, I, maybe we can expect 50 out of the gate? Um, I don't know that there's anything specific that tells me that other than, A, people like new things. Um, B, this is a more affordable option than we publicly offered for Buy Our Future. So we've done some testing with $100 plans behind the scenes. It has sold. People have appreciated that. Um, and it's interesting because those plans are 99 bucks for 21 months. So it's essentially like you're on board for a while. Like yeah. you know that you're going to be on board. And, and the third thing to me is, <clears throat> I mean, I just think there are few things like the comprehensiveness of what we're trying to do. And I think that we can get people to jump on board with that and at least see what it's like, see how it goes, and we can learn from that. Yeah. I also, the reason I just asked you that is because a point that I was trying to make is like, you only, if you're, if you've never done something like this or you've never started a business or whatever, you're probably thinking about, like you're having this meeting and you're going, well, I don't know how many sales to expect. I don't know who's going to sign up. And that's a very like scary feeling and uncertainty feeling. The only way that you get to a place where you're in a meeting like this and you go, oh, maybe we can expect 50 and here's what our goals are and have real numbers is through experience. Yeah. So you have to like put other stuff out into the world in order to say, okay, people liked this. Few, like we've done by our future for three years now. So by, you know, first for you and then for both of us. So we have like real data to go off of. And that doesn't mean that we, that doesn't mean that nobody can sign up. That's totally a possibility. But I'm just saying it's more or less just like a little soapbox of saying like, you're never going to know until you try. Yeah. Uh, so with these quarterly boxes slash packages things, it's that I would love to do a welcome gift. And if that skims, let's say $10 off of every new member, you know, I'm, I'm willing to eat that cost for the chance that for a good percentage of those people, it's a, it's a better experience than they've almost ever had purchasing anything online that's like an online subscription. Sure. Base. Now, if you've purchased something that's like a get it in the mail subscription, you expect it to come in the mail. But with like signing up for a software product or someone's online course or whatever, you don't expect to get something in the mail. And when you do, I feel like that creates a, an, like a connection that you can't have anywhere else. Yeah. Um, but I do like your idea of like making it a certain amount of months. So maybe it's not so much. Well, I like your idea about doing something smaller, in smaller the yeah. in the beginning because we can always go, we can always run the numbers and go listen. Like people are typically churning out after about two and a half months. So that's, you know, are we willing to spend $10 on somebody that we're only making $200 on? Then yeah, maybe that math works out. So like we can, we can always just stop it. Um, and I feel more confident about <laughs> If somebody doesn't re, you know, what do you, what's the word? Resubscribe, or like if somebody cancels after one month, and they only brought in you know a hundred dollars of revenue, and and we spent ten dollars to create a good experience for them, I'm that's money I'm willing to spend. Yeah. So. And that's the idea behind these boxes is they're not a monthly thing, they're a once a quarter. So the original idea was once a quarter. So it was like, if you look at the life of a customer. A customer's worth $1,200 per year, just off the bat. 
So this is at our price point of ninety nine dollars, which we'll talk about. Hundred bucks. Yeah, hundred bucks. <clears throat> so if they're worth. Did you decide that you're gonna make it hundred? Yeah, we talked about this oh, before. Okay, I forgot. Yeah, I wanted a round number. Yeah. Um, None so of that nine nine. Shout out to Alice if she's watching this. I don't know if she is, but. Um, yeah, not playing. Uh, so very interesting aside. Quickly. Sure. There's. There's just the only reason why you choose 99, 97, 95, whatever, is psychology. That's it. It's just you're literally trying to say someone is more willing to pay five, seven, or nine than they are double zero. And that's a psychological tactic that I don't want to play anymore. And I want to run a business that I have full control over with you, like a software product that I have multiple owners of, it's harder for me to sell that and it's harder to change a lot of things that are running. But for all of our new stuff, it has been round numbers. Now, the reason why we did 99 for um, the buyer of future payments, I don't know why we did that. I think this was before I had this epiphany that I was like, I don't want to You decided it. you'd rather leave a little bit of money on the table and be able to just go, I'm taking a different path that yeah. feels more authentic to who I am. Yeah, I would like to, I think this is worth $100 per month, $1,200 per year. And that's what I believe. So, you know, if, if the $1 difference is like the psychological thing that you need to spend, then I'm losing you as a customer. So anywho, 1200 bucks, 1200 bucks a year. And let's remove, let's say 30% of that just for taxes, expenses on our side, other things. So that's 300 bucks. So we have $800 left. So $800 left from this one customer. And then if we were to do quarterly boxes, so quarterly means four, yes? <laughs> Good job. Good. Uh, let's say that they are $15 per box. Let's just call them that. So that's... That's with shipping? $15 a box? Let's say 20 Okay. Yeah. So $20 per box, that's 80 bucks. So someone has paid us $800 minus 80 We're still making $710 from that person, which is great. And so even if you break that down monthly, it's like 60 some odd dollars a month. So I'm super comfortable with that. Like that leaves plenty for us. However, you have to also think about it as like if somebody makes it six months and they get the second box, like you also have to play that side of it. You oh, know for what I'm sure. Saying? But they're not getting the third and fourth box. No, I understand. But I'm saying I'm, I'm saying you could catch somebody where they've you've now spent, you know, $40 on them, but you sure, haven't gotten that. End. Yeah, that's You know what fine. I'm saying? Like, but even still, like you're not spending... $20 on someone until like the three month mark or whatever because the first month you're spending 10 so it is a little bit of like a sliding scale anyway the whole entire point of these these boxes is to to say okay yeah you're going to get the virtual experience you're going to get the courses the training the workshops the behind the scenes videos like all of this stuff but you're also going to get something in the mail you're also going to get something that we've handcrafted and put together that we've picked out the things we've maybe handmade something for you in there like i'm gonna just sew a whole bunch of socks and put them in there no um I'm gonna sew some socks yeah not even like knit them like make them but you're just gonna maybe take a little bit from this sock and a little bit from that truthfully sock and what i'm gonna do together. is all the one socks that are left that don't have a partner you're gonna match them up i'm gonna start keeping those and i'm just gonna start taking them apart and sewing them into people's socks to send this was giving me weird vibes <laughs> like you were gonna like but I like sprinkle some sauce as, on people. As we talk about this, and the, logist, the logistics of it are a whole different thing. Ordering boxes, ordering the stuff, putting it together, shipping labels, printing, dropping off. Like that's a whole um, kind of ordeal. I really like the in, in the mailboxes. Like to me, it just creates so much more unique of an experience. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can come up with a plan for it and what it looks like, and, and maybe it, it doesn't become $20 well, a box. Well, I think but, that. I think that is the reason that we talk, have talked about this is like to always come back to like what our guiding values are as a company and what we want to be, which is like always to go that one step above and beyond yeah. and to always lean towards that. So if it means making a little bit less money, but creating it, creating an experience that other people aren't willing to create, that's where we feel like we shine because we actually want people to have a great experience. Yeah. Um, so I think we should definitely figure that out um and the more that you say all of these things that somebody's getting I think I always come from this place of like trying to over deliver over deliver like right. cram it with stuff cram it with stuff but truthfully I'm thinking to myself that your point in the beginning which is that let's not try to pack it so full of stuff that we're so focused on the front end sale 
let's instead like just have confidence that all of this is really valuable and focus way more of our attention into the care of organizing this stuff in a way that it's actually useful. Like, so like I view it as like some people create programs, I think online and they just pack it with so much stuff, which we've been guilty of, which we've been guilty yeah. of. So, so that they make the sale easy on the person. So it's like, and you get these bonus interviews and you get this and you get that. And like, that tends to be it. Um, but if you can strip that down a little bit more and then put all of your energy and attention on making the, once, once you get in the door, making that experience really good, then I feel like even if you get less customers, you'll retain them for so much longer yeah. versus the surface level customers that you like tricked into this yeah. immense value. And then they feel like I can't use any of this. Like I really think to some degree, if we created some type of like, like, launching your first product schedule. And it was essentially like some type of little calendar tool that we build where we ask questions and you fill it out. And then like, it's in the back end dashboard for you to look at and like, you can check things off and go through with it. And we probably wouldn't have something like that at, at the launch of this, but that would be something we would be working on the next couple months. Like to me, that's worth paying a hundred dollars a month for, for as long as you're continuing to sell your thing, because you have the calendar, you have the thing that keeps you accountable to that. And you can't, like, you could, take screenshots of it and then rebuild it yourself. But I think you'd be so happy that like that thing created like uh, yeah. a, a business plan for you and like some things that you were able to stick to. In a weird way, it. this is giving me a vibe of like apps, yeah, like for Wandering sure. Aimfully apps. Like part of the idea going forward is to create these little apps that you can maybe like pick and choose what you want to add to your dashboard. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah, it's like I want to. I want to start a podcast. Okay, great. Here's everything that you need here's to do. Here's the podcast pack. Yeah, here's everything you need to do, and start with step one. And it's like step one. Here's the microphone you need to buy. Step two, you need a website for this. Step three, where are you going to host your podcast? You know, it's like step four. Plan out the expenses you're going to have. Maybe those. Let's. Are gonna... This is kind of fun, and I'm feeling excited about this. So let's just for fun. I'm writing apps, which is like app slash tools. And let's just brainstorm some of those fun things. Sure. So, so that to me is like a roadmap app yep. where you input what you want to achieve and it gives you sort of like the, the roadmap and the checklist. And I don't think we should play that down because I think we could do that for getting sponsorships, managing your, your branding or creating your branding, setting up your podcast, running a podcast, selling your first product. Starting a, uh, creating an online course. Creating an online course. Honestly, like embracing minimalism like if we want to do some life stuff yeah managing your money getting out of debt yeah yeah getting out of debt managing your money are probably separate things yeah but i was just thinking of ones that are like life related um what was getting sponsorship created on like oh starting a podcast okay so that would it be would be really powerful writing a book writing a book i think those are the big ones that people have mm -hmm. I feel like the sliding is gonna be real cool. Yeah, just sit up a little bit. Just get up in here. Um, okay, so that's one. What's another app slash tool? Um, like a mood board builder mm -hmm. slash visual vo vocabulary. I know people have a lot a hard time with that. What are other ones we've talked about? The you said the launch calendar one. Yeah, but isn't that the roadmap thing? Aren't those the roadmaps? Well, no, because that one... So it, for me, in the roadmap one, I'm picturing, like, you set the goal that you want, and it spits out, like, the roadmap with, like, phase one, phase two, all these things with, you know, timing for it all or whatever. But this launch calendar would be something where you're, like, it's just for launching. So it's, like, kind of like... I think Brian Harris did a similar thing of this a while ago, but it's the idea of, like oh, you want to start a new business, so you put in when you want to have it done by, and it kind of builds out a rough timeline. It's not for, like, emails. It's just for a general checklist. Like, give me an example of what it would be. So would that be, like, so, for a podcast or for a... Sure. Thing? It could be anything. But, like, let's say Wandering Aimfully. It's, like, what we did manually. It's basically, like, okay, we want to launch Wandering Aimfully by May 1st. Okay, then we know, like, maybe you want to have pre-orders. So, like, build that out two weeks before or a month before. Like, mm -hmm. whatever those things are. Okay. Yeah, I think my brain's just getting in the weeds with what exactly that looks like. And we don't need to build it right now. So, I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Cool. Just a different idea. Yep. 
what are more tools? Um, what are things that you do have to do in your business that you're like, I wish I had a thing for that? Sales page builder? Can we Sales about? page builder, for sure. For show. For show. For show. Some type of this would be really complicated, but I'm just going to write it down. Like, I kind of think of, um, oh, let's hold hands. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch your face back in that moment. I kind of think of, uh, <laughs> that was nice. Um, I think of Michelle, um, and how we want to help her with the roadmap that we did in future finding of like how your products flow together. Something like a, a customer product road, yeah, roadmap. Workflow mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, I wrote down product workflow thingy. I mean, another thing we could pull out of future finding too is how to like how you should price your product. And that would probably be pretty simple, but mm -hmm. it would be a good thing for people to just go back to whenever they're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of any other thing in future finding that would be helpful. Okay, I feel like that's a good list for now. Yeah. But anyway, that could be something also that one, one other thing we could do is like your like um like Rockstar customer tool and just something to help people keep track of like their absolute best customers mm -hmm. and like how they could reward them and cuz we like the probably idea probably use this for ourselves. Or the idea I had before where you get a little notification of a Rockstar customer to email every day. Like you just send them a one mm. sentence email where it's like, "Hey, like just checking in how are like being proactive about Mm -hmm. reaching out to those top customers. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, I think that's enough. But what I was going to say is I really feel like this could be a, a great way to differentiate ourselves as a monthly membership because most memberships, digital memberships at least, are very content-focused yep. and resource-focused, and this is tool-focused and yep. software-focused. Um, so I think it would be really fun for us to, after the craziness of getting it launched, pick one to start with and build out a timeline and um, do that. Cool. Cool. Um, I also wrote down what are we going to do about our existing courses. Okay. So do this you want to go through those yeah. courses? Well, I want to just have a discussion about if we think it's time to like fold everything for real under Wandering Aimfully and just okay. not sell them individually. Yeah. So let's look at... I mean, if we're being honest, it's really only your two courses. Which ones? The lettering course? Well, the, the branding course. Well, the iPad and, and the better lettering. So those like three one, courses? Yeah. Yeah. So it's really only yours. Imperfect Writer is the only one of mine that's still out there and for sale. And it, I mean, there's nothing working for it to be selling uh, on its own. So I'm happy to fold it in. And I don't think Chantel will care. Um, hope you don't care, Chantel. So really all of my stuff, let's just say it's all only available in modern gameplay. So concerning your things. I mean, my first instinct is like. So what, here's one thought. Yeah. Uh, if I wasn't thinking about business opportunities at all, and I was just thinking about my own sanity and my own living first and my own, how I want my ideal life to be, it would be to wrap it into wandering aimfully because I'm so after four years, I'm tired of having like the mental space being taken up of like, even though nothing's going on with the lettering site right now, the fact that it exists and nothing's being updated on it, like weighs on me. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I don't think it makes enough money for it to really matter. Well, that's for sure at this moment it doesn't make enough money just for everyone at home. We're talking like on a good month, all three of those courses making a thousand bucks, a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks on like the best month because we have no, there's no promotion of it. Now, what gets me, like what makes this not such an easy decision is like, I already have the infrastructure in place for the better rating course, like pour gasoline on it and run Facebook ads. Same for iPad lettering. Like those could, I could boost those by a couple thousand probably, but that's energy ta being taken away from this. That's a little bit of a confusion of like. Well, it's, they're separate audiences, right? Cause it's the same. You could say the same thing for like me and tea tree and wandering gameplay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I still want to grow tea tree, but it's because it's a whole separate audience. Like, 
that only cares about running an online course. Like they don't have any interest in us. They don't have any interest in this stuff. Like mm -hmm. they're just a yoga teacher who wants to teach yoga online. Mm -hmm. So they don't care at all about mm -hmm. us. They've never even heard of us. Mm -hmm. They just want to have a, so I think about the same thing for the better branding course specifically, and maybe iPad lettering. And well, that, that for sure is a different audience because to me, somebody who's interested in just adding iPad lettering as like a creative right. skill is not going to spend a hundred dollars a month. Mo right. Most of them aren't Yeah, a small fraction. will, but most of them aren't going to be like, Oh yeah, I would actually like to instead pay a hundred dollars a month, you know, and run a creative business or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Part of me wonders actually if it would be worth it to reach out to someone in buyer future now and see if anybody wants to help manage those two things. And you release the reins of having to control the creative and the whatever. And like you've created all of that stuff and someone just tries to pour the gasoline on the fire and they've had experience doing that. And so they do that. Mm -hmm. And then we just see like if someone can run that and they can handle all the things along with it and we're not there doing it, then let's do that. Like, let's try that. I hadn't thought about that. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. And just profit share. Yeah. Because even if they've tripled it and then it's making $3,000 a month. That's and not tripling. That's doubling. 1500 times two is $4,500 a month. Nice. What do you split it on the middle? Yeah. 50-50 is always the best. So then it becomes... Pro tip. So then that gives somebody an opportunity to make a couple thousand dollars extra a month with something that they don't have to create. Right. They don't have to the, build the thing. They just have to promote the thing. But then that's a lot of work for me to like even set that up. That's the thing. You're not setting it up. No, no, no. I'm saying set that up, that arrangement with another person and like teach them like, here's what to do with it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, possibly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't quantify what the mental baggage is of those things. Yeah. I mean, it's only, you know, like what what that's worth to you because let's say that someone was able to double our income from it like three thousand dollars a month is meaningful amounts of money yeah and so maybe that's the answer is like there's still we both agree that there's still yeah and something here's, there. here's what i would say why don't we get through the build of this get into a groove with this and maybe revisit in like june july and take a week to sit down and go, okay, what does this look like? Let's actually look at the historical data of what it's been doing. Because I just took a super ancillary look at like yeah. your lettering course, but I haven't looked at the branding course. And what is it converting now on its own? That's also something like if a little like case study that we could even do inside For sure. Wondering and, that's, that's... and be like, hey, do you guys have like a kind of like ignored product that you haven't like... I mean, truthfully, it's also the... Like I would, I would advocate for keeping, especially better branding course up to say, okay, guys, you want to make a $200 course. You want to have a lighter version of it. You want to have an email course that leads into it. Like this is the business model. Yeah. So it's like you create the course, you create the free email course. You have the two payment options. You have the website around it. You have the content around it. Here's the, the like funnel for lack of a better word, where you put Facebook ads up or you do retargeting to people who are already coming to the traffic. And this is how this works. Yeah. And we write that full thing mm -hmm. that's like soup to nuts, how you do it. And that becomes just gold for people who are in there because they can then go back and they can go, what stage am I at in this process? Oh, I'm at the like building and drip stage. Yeah. Okay. Here's how we set up the workflow. All right. You convinced me. Complete side note. Since we know that it was already on my list to update. Just the smallest touch means so much, you know? Smallest touch means so much. <laughs> Scribbly. Go ahead. Um, what if people, like, thought that was going to go a different direction? Like, they were like, what am I watching? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we start out fighting. We end making out for, like, a good ten minutes. And people are like, oh, God. That'd be funny. Um, never happened, but it'd be funny. What I was going to say is I was wanting to update the branding on the better branding course here is a question in general about the course Wait, the branding of like the website and whatnot you knew i was doing that because i was redoing the guide remember this oh, was at that, the end of last year that didn't get done no we've talked about this you literally when i brought this up two months ago your exact words were oh that didn't get done the exact thing <laughs> that you just did right now and Oops. i wish i wish i could like roll the footage phil Oops. but i can't who's phil 
He's our production Phil assistant. Harmonic? His name is Phil Harmonic. Harmonic. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like our invisible production assistant. Yeah. Um, okay. So complete side note, me being a just design junkie and like a weird person. What do you feel about like all of our courses inside the new Wondering Inflay are going to be like different branded? They all have different brands. Well, this is like the Paul Jarvis model that he went through. And, like, he completely rebranded, rebranded everything? everything to look the same. What, what did he rebrand? Chimp Essentials, Grow he Your did? Audience. Yeah. To all look similar? Yeah. Okay. Investigate this while I look to make sure we're still recording. Sweatpants, still rocking the sweatpants. <gasps> when did he do this? This was like end of last year. I have not been up on growyouraudience.co. I just remembered that his grow your audience colors are similar to our brand. type.com. I said .co. Paul, growyouraudience.com is for sale. Yeah, they don't think they want like $7,500. Oh, I see. So he's creating like a suite of products basically. Yeah. So to answer your question. Good. So I don't have to feel bad that our branding looks similar to what that was before. Do I think it's worth it for us to go through and rebrand everything to look the same? Yes. Is your question. Yes. Um, I think that's a nice to have down the road. It's a lot of I, courses. I don't think it's going to impact a customer's experience at all. Right. I think that's just for us and our nitpicky right. thing. I think that's probably right. Thank you. Those are the decisions you have to make. But it is like so crappy, you know, like when Wells Fargo or like PayPal or whatever redesigns like the home page and you get all excited and you're like, ooh, this is sleek, this is sexy, this is new. And then you get inside and you're like, fuck. Still Wait. ugly. Can we say that? I kind of said a bad word under my breath. I just felt like winking. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. Okay. So those that's the answer to our courses. That's the answer to, let's just talk about the customer experience and then let's move on to the dashboard. Customer experience where? Like in a very theoretical sense, like in a very non-tangible sense, like what do we just want, what are some things that we just want to feel that we want our customers to feel throughout the entire experience? Um inviting mm -hmm. um unique uh, I, good value for what they're yeah buying. if there's anything that i feel like we took away from the buyer future experience that we want to carry forward is like we did inviting we successfully we did unique successfully i think we did value successfully what i think we could do better is organization and focus like yeah. making someone feel like their specific needs are catered to and not overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the opposite of overwhelmed is, but... Whelmed. Whelmed. Someone's just whelmed. <laughs> Underwhelmed. How are you feeling today? Whelmed. <laughs> um, well, light. So I think that that is something that we want to make front and center about this that we've it's talked the about. the sun right over there. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Oh, here I can just go this way. Everyone gets to see my sweat butt. Sweat butt, sweat butt. It doesn't seem like that actually did it, much. It definitely didn't. Um, do this one. Well, it's more just, I don't even feel it. Oh God. There. If you knock that down. Nah. Sweat butt. Ah. So what I was gonna say is what we wanna make a top priority is really organizing because there's so much. Courses, tools, articles, so, like, making the dashboard function so that it's super organized is the key, I think. Yep. How long is this meeting? Um, we've been going for an minutes. hour and 15 minutes. Okay. Long meetings. So, do you want to move on to the dashboard then? I do. I know you do. So... I made you put a pin in it for so long. I strongly believe <laughs> that hurt you way more than it hurt me. <laughs> You punched like it was my left hand, so I had no control over like how much power I put behind it, <laughs> and I like hit it on accident. And I was like, "That was funny. I'll punch him," and it hit you so hard. <laughs> I was like, oh. how, how's it feel? It didn't feel good. Where's your wedding ring? Opportunity to zoom in. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. 
So what we have now, circling back to earlier, and I'm obviously just gonna chunk, take that chunk of what I already said and put it right here so I don't have to say it all again. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so what we have now is a dashboard of stuff that you basically, you basically, it looks like a library. You get dropped in, you have all these tiles of all these projects, you can pick whichever one you want and it links out through that. So the linking out through that is always going to happen because we're not going to put everything like underneath all of the things. Um, one thing we could think about that just came to my mind was we could actually change all of the domains of all of our projects away from their own domains. So like get sponsorships could be sponsorships.wanderingamefully.com and then that's the course there. For those of us that have thousands of students in various things, that makes it very hard. It's true. Okay, so we won't do that. All right. So my thought has been to, you get dropped into the dashboard and maybe there's stuff that you see, but the first thing that is like, what do you need help with? And essentially it would be a drop down of the things that we have that we can help you with. And the idea being, let's say like, let's take one that's a little bit more difficult where it's, I wanna write a book. And instead of just saying, okay, cool, click here to go read, finish your damn book, it's actually more along the lines of a couple smaller things that people can do to actually feel a little bit of a m momentum around what they want. Which is almost like the baby version of the roadmap tool. Yes. So it spits out basically a baby version of the roadmap tool. Yeah. And what we would essentially do is go through every project and go, what are the, like the three easy wins with this project right now? Not to say that these things are easy, but just to build some momentum because we know how powerful that is. The three key wins. Whoa. Um, and you have that with every project. And so then... And, okay. excuse me, on top of that, we also have recommended resources for those things. Right. Because you could be thinking like, oh, I want to go and write a book right now, or I want to get started writing a book. But really the question in your mind is like, what software should I use to write my book in? Yeah. Like you know? I, I am envisioning a very powerful search feature. Yeah, search feature. A search feature? A search Run by Surge. <laughs> a Surge feature. Yeah. And it spits out basically our articles, courses, tools, anything related. So we need to create like, Basically, we would just create a tagging system yep. that allows it to pull, you, in. pull yep. in everything related to that one thing that you want to accomplish. Yeah, and essentially, we're going to need to create an Airtable for all of our products and then pull in what articles have been written, what products do we always, like for podcasting, like I always recommend the same three mics. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's having those things available there as well. So it pulls in articles, courses, um Recommended resources slash like, products. So let's say we have one in there that's managing your money, like Airtable would oh, be. Oh, tool. Yeah. So like. Tools and products. So outside. Yeah. Outside. Like products that live outside in the yard. They have like their own little outside like, product like house. he's outside dog. He's outside product dog. He's outside product dog. Okay. <laughs> Proud of yourself. Okay, articles, courses, outside tools, and software product dogs. And. <laughs> Ow! A shin kick? Yeah. Shit. All right, I'll give you a left handed knee punch. Ow! <laughs> it's devolving. It's devolving. We're hungry. Okay, so the search that results in like the roadmap things, I think I is I great. I said that we just ate. <laughs> so I think that's great. Yeah. Um, what else? That's a good question. So let's just, let's shift gears from like the thing we know we want. The chest is tight. To a couple of the things that we've thought about and okay. we can kind of decide what they are. Oops, sorry bud. Watch so um, one of the things that I would like to talk about is the I have, I need. Mm -hmm. So essentially a customer could, they go in and there's a box that says like, hey, what skills do you have that you could offer to other people within the community? You're a WordPress developer, you're a designer, you're an illustrator, uh, you're a copywriter. And if you want new clients or the potential for new clients, th it would be like a built-in job board of sorts. Yeah. Go ahead. Interject. I just thought a cool feature of that would be um, you, so like, let's say when you get into Wandering Aimfully, like it ties in with your profile like so you fill out like what your skills are but then you almost have like an open for business or closed for business mm -hmm. 
like little sign that you can, so your skills are tied to your, your account for the life of your account. But you basically, by you saying I'm open right. for business, you're saying I'm available for hire. Yeah. That's One thing idea. can you make a note of is emails as a separate topic sure. for the customer experience. So I have skills and I'm not sure if I want skills fits in that same thing, right? So it's like maybe you get into the dashboard and it's like, hey, Caroline, like what are the things that you get paid for or that you want to get paid for that you can do? enter a little bit of information, it creates that tag, whatever. And then when I log into the dashboard, there's a little area that's like, you know, you have the like, what can, what, what do you need help with product wise? But maybe it's in the same search. So this is where I get a little bit like muddied up is, so we have the drop down of products, but maybe there's a separate thing of like, what do you need help with? And that drop down is specifically services from other members. So it's potentially a list of everybody and what they do, designers, illustrators, WordPress developers, soft, you know, whatever. And you can search like, oh, I need a WordPress developer for my site. So I go in and I search WordPress developer. I see your listing that you have an availability, things you have your little open sign flipped, and then I can contact you. Like there's like Yeah, a why thing. can't that just be a people search, like a your pack type thing? It can for sure. It's just trying to figure out how we don't just have like multiple search box search boxes. Like everywhere. instead of doing the like instead of basically what I'm saying is instead of having it format like a job board, it formats like a search. Yeah, for sure. You know, so that you... It, the I just onus, mean more job board from the perspective of like you submit that you have work available or you go and you look to see yeah. what you need. That's all. Yeah. So I think the onus is on the person who needs to hire a person to then go and search for people. And it would be cool too if we use a tagging system. I think we talked about this before where... We incorporate it into the what do you need help with drop down so that if I search podcast, it spits out Someone, articles, courses, yeah. outside tools, and people. Yeah, absolutely. As a category. Yeah. Are you missing your comfy pillow? Is that the issue? We also haven't talked about the logistics of like if people then deactivate their account. like. Yeah, I mean, I think we're just going to have to have a customer roles conversation with Ben, who's our developer, mm -hmm. and how that's handled. Okay. And really, it's just like, as soon as they're deactivated, their role gets removed from everything. Right, they go dark or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing that uh, I've thought about. Um, the other thing that I've thought about is some type of little, like gamification system, where yeah. if you've gone through a course, or you've gone through a call or you, you know like you get little virtual tokens or whatever. This is something that I feel very passionate about because I feel like it's something that people don't build into the experience of. And remind people where this came from. So this came from years and years ago your business I wear your shirt um, that we worked together on and you had created this thing called shirt squad which was so cool because people who could sign up and every month you basically get assigned to a a different shirt squad so you'd be like a random fan who'd be paired up with like 12 different other fans or like whatever and you'd be on a team that had a, an animal mascot like zebra zebra or, or, team, or if you're team super Plaxico. lucky team plaxico that was like the coveted squad to be on and so you'd be on like the plaxico squad or whatever and um you would get points as a team and so every month there would be like a winning team and it was just this like really fun gamified way of keeping people engaged in the community and knowing that a big piece of our brand is basically bringing like fun and lightheartedness to life and business, I think not only does it make a lot of sense to create like a differentiator to like highlight, you know, what makes us different, but also to keep people engaged and keep people wanting to come back to the dashboard and wanting to make the most out of their subscription because the more people use their subscription, the more likely they are to keep paying. Yeah. So it just makes sense. Yeah. And this is a tough one for me because I really like it, but... I don't know that it's a worthwhile thing to invest the development time in in the beginning. So it's just a tough, like, we have all these other things we can build. And I think everything else that we've thought about so far is actually going to provide value to the people who are paying money. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to provide value to the people who are paying money. This is just like, a, oh, that's kind of cute or that's kind of so fun. So maybe there's like a super low hanging fruit version where it's like you get points for completing a course or whatever. Right. You know? Like, no badges, no whatever, but just yeah, 
some type of completion aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I do think that a first version of that would be kind of fun, even just from the perspective of like, when you search for that course, there's a status on it that you can check that's like, I've completed this course, or like, I went through this course. And by doing that, you kind of collect these little badges. And for some reason, I see them at the bottom of the dashboard, but um, almost so like are, a little... So is it an honor system then? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. This whole membership is an honor system. Like, that's one thing that even we've talked about with Buyer Future is what stops someone from buying, going through, downloading as much of the stuff as they can. You can't download the software products, but then canceling. And it's trust. That's all it is. And if someone's going to do that, then they're a jerk. And I hope they, you know, I hope they unsubscribe and that they feel really shitty about themselves a couple months later. And that's all you can do. Like, that's all you, you can do. If people start to become malicious, like, uh, it doesn't whatever yeah. that's on them. Okay. But anyway, I do think some type of like boy scout merit badge sash. Girl scout? No, because I want pink. No, I'm just kidding. Boy or girl scout. Yeah. I Q. feel like gender fluidity has come up many times during this. Q scout. Q scout. Yeah. Good job. Okay. You know that doesn't relate to yeah, the gender yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. we've talked about this. Yeah, it's we're just gonna, confusing. We're going to go over it again. It's okay. Yeah, it's just confusing. Um, I'm in full support. It's just confusing. Of what? Q. Yeah. Come here. What did I do? He has flies in your eyebrow. I got it. I'll get it. Don't worry. Watch you this. haven't gotten it yet. It's still there. 100% there. Okay. You got it. Yeah. I think it was an eye booger. Oh, gross. <laughs> gross. You don't yeah. call him that? We're this far in. That's what we're devolving to, huh? Um, what other things have you thought about for the dashboard that you would find helpful for people? You putting in a goal that you have so yeah. that it's like front and center. Like right now my goal is to launch podcast by May 1st. Yep. And that's like your kind of like some of those like browser extensions. That well, you yeah. See. And I really like that because I mean, we've talked about that in multiple occasions with buyer future people of like, what's your word for the year and put it up in front of you and that type of thing. So I think even this would be fun. To have like, you know, a goal for the, the month or whatever. Mm -hmm. And again, that gets into the email thing too, which could be fun as like sending an email to remind people of their goal. It could be interesting. Anyway. Emails. Yeah. Let's not get to that yet. Uh oh. So community access as well. So like the Slack channel. Right. Um, just like an easy. Yeah. Your pack if we're going to continue to set that up, which I think we should. It's just a good social directory. Like I still believe in it. And people will be like, who's in Los Angeles? And like, go to your pack and you can find out. So I think that would be good. Um, trying to think of what else. Whoever's designing this is going to have quite the time trying to organize this. Tomorrow. You have to have it done tomorrow, too. Um, I mean, let's be honest. Ben's going to have the hardest time with all this. So what is another thing that a customer would get value from in their dashboard and that they would want to come and sign into? One thing we talked about was notes on specific projects. Mm -hmm. So like if you find get sponsorships within the dashboard, you can leave notes on it for yourself. Like give me a use case specifically. Um, so I went through the get sponsorships course over the, a, a weekend and oh, I really wanted to um, do some follow-up emails and like send them follow-up emails and I wanted to um, put together like my sponsor pricing sheet. So, so you think you write that down in wherever you... Possibly, but we've heard from buyer future members who've said they wish they could do it in the dashboard with the product. Because they don't How necessarily... How many people, realistically? Oh, 10. Really? Yeah. 10 to people have said that specifically? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that many. Yeah. And I don't know if that's enough. I mean, from 400 people, that's, that's a very small percentage. Um, but yeah, I just think like... Especially if it's not difficult to have some type of little like note taking thing could be helpful. Again, like this is just some ideas of, of potential value for this stuff. Mm -hmm. The other thing we talked about was recommended things that we've enjoyed because people always love that stuff. So like books we're reading, movies we've seen, products we've tried and liked. Like favorites yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I could see, see Podcasts that. Podcasts we're listening to. I could see that in some type of like non-primary function. For sure. Like some, like, you know, a, a hide and show type of a thing. Mm -hmm. 
Because again, like the one thing that's really interesting about by our future and the people who are in it is a large majority of them has have never even looked at any of the products. They're there for the community. They're there for us and hanging out with us. And so if like the first and foremost thing we're putting at the top is like, go look at our products. A good percentage of the people who buy this are probably not going to care about that. And maybe that'll change because we're changing like the amount of information that's around those things. But I'm just bringing that up as a yeah. point. You're saying like, you're just bringing it up as a point of like opening up our perspective to not be so product first focused. And for you, yeah, your specific comment of like, we could like hide the favorites down the thing. Like the favorites could be one of the f- most fun things. Like, I don't think anyone's going to spend a hundred dollars a month to know what our favorite things are. That'd be insane. <laughs> uh, it'd be awesome. If you want to do that, go or ahead. Oprah. Um, but I do think that to, to some degree, it's... you're just saying question that assumption. Right. Is all you're saying. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, Another idea is similar to the, like, writing a goal front and center and the word of the year, which is, like, user-generated content type thing, which is, like, um, I don't know, like, a monthly income goal. Ooh, so... Which people tend to have a lot of. As we were just saying this, um, and we could do that as well, but my thought was, how much has Wandering Aimfully made you? And it's I think so it's, hard. Well, it's hard for some people, but I think it's easy for other people. Like, that's so hard. I understand. But someone like Brendan Hufford is a great example. Like, Brendan knows that he sold a side business, quit his job, got a new job because of Buyer Future. And so, like, he can directly attribute certain chunks of money in his life to that. Now, how we display that, and, and if, if, he, if people even want to display it, I think would be a question that they could answer before they have it there at all times. But I just think... So the way I look at it is I've never purchased an online course. I've never purchased anything. And I think it's just because by, by nature, I'm you know, like, I'm going to go and figure it out myself. But for someone who likes buying courses, they like buying things. I bet they would really want to know, like, how can I quantify my return on this mm-hmm. as opposed to just another thing that I purchased? And I would be willing to guess, and we could find this out tomorrow when we send the survey, is what percentage of people that have bought by our future have purchased other products. Mm-hmm. I bet it's a super high percent. And to even then ask them one question further of like, do you know what return you've gotten on that thing? Yeah. And granted, Wandering Aimfully is not just about the return. However, that's one of the first things that we said when we talked about this is like having people increase their income in a sustainable way. And if we could clearly show them like uh, Nadia, Nadia launched, she created her first course, branded her first course, launched her first course, all because of Buyer Future. It made five thousand dollars in her launch. That pays for her buyer future membership two times over. Right. So if someone purchases Wandering Aimfully, goes to the things, does a course right. launch for five thousand dollars, guess what? You've just paid for Wandering Aimfully for four years. Yeah. And that's the type of thing for me that I think if we can come up with a positioning for it, and maybe the positioning isn't how much has it made you. It's like your ROI. Well, not even that. It's like. We want every single member to launch something within the first six months. That pays for it. That pays for Wandering Aimfully. I like that. And that's like a goal that's on the dashboard that we can kind of tell people, you know, give them one specific route. Maybe it's the online course route because it's just the easiest and it's the least barrier to entry. But And think about how powerful that is, you know? And then you yeah. go back in there and it's like... Until you've done it and you've made the money, it's kind of encouraging you along in some way. Mm -hmm. And then once you've done it and you're like, okay, did you do this? And you say yes. And it's like, how much did you make at your launch? And you say $5,000. And then that box changes to you've like your course launch name has paid for your wanting aim for the membership until and like a date would be really cool. Mm -hmm. So that they're just constantly reminded of like, oh, this thing did give me a good ROI and like, it did actually help me make money. Not that it's the most important thing, just yeah. part of it. Yeah. It's it's always a balance because it's like we don't – we definitely don't want it to be about money. But if people are going to pay money for something, right? you have to show the value. You know, more than 50%, I think, of what we're trying to sell people is running an online business, making money, working for yourself – Again, yeah, you it's like earning a sustainable income as a tool to fuel the life that you really right. want to live. They go hand in hand. Okay. I think um, that's a good I'm, I think that's a good enough places, amount of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fading, so I'm hitting hitting my wall. 
but I think this gives me so much better of an idea and definitely gives me plenty of stuff to play with for the dashboard tomorrow. Cool. So how do you feel like, where did we start and where have we ended? I think we've nailed the business model. I also feel like, <laughs> I also feel like the product development is good. Is going really well. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about emails. So let's table that maybe for another discussion. Yeah. But that's just, just to give you an idea if you didn't pick up on is to s basically create a workflow yeah. for people. And then customer like retention. Kind emails. Of emails. But then also like, let's say someone wants to start doing a podcast. If they were to check a box, it's like, I want four weekly emails, like four weeks of emails about podcasting send me these emails so they can be like a reminder system. And it's like a workflow that they can opt in and out of mm -hmm. if they want. Um, cool. And like if they haven't joined the Slack channel, somehow to like keep reminding them if they want to join Slack channel. Okay. Um, I was trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to talk about with this. I think that's it. Cool. Feel great. All right. Let's go to the gym. Customer experience. That's Never. a wrap. Bye.